fixed. I, I went to get a computer fixed, and I had to go to the Geek Squad. So it's obviously acceptable now. <laughs> um, and these are people who are making it their business to turn the digital world into a tool and present information and spread knowledge to everyone and anyone who wants it. I'm referring to OpenJC, as I said before, and they're into teaching computer coding to all and sundry. And uh, that's only part of a myriad of other things they do. Um, and they want to make everybody knowledgeable about the digital world. You know, this is a whole different way of looking at things. There was a time when the way that we dealt with knowledge was those who had it were like wizards, and they didn't want anybody else to know. All right. Uh, and, you know, it was all secret, and I can, the philosopher's stone, I can, I can turn base metal into gold and all that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, but the, the people in this world that you inhabit love for everybody else to know things, which is very, very interesting. That's why we, this fight we have, which I'm going to ask you about, net neutrality, is so important. Um, it's a great tool, but we have to keep it in the hands of everybody. Yeah. If, it, yeah. if they ever do it the way they want to do it, then they'll make it like everything else in America. And only the rich and the people of a certain class and a certain checkbook will be able to avail themselves of it. And that would be an awful uh, sin. So first of all, let's have you all introduce yourselves, starting with this young lady sitting over with the beautiful <laughs> smile sitting over here <laughs> in the red blouse. Um, hi, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Anna Lukasiak. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of OpenGC. Um, I was born and raised in Poland. Uh, grew up um, in Jersey City. Actually, went to high school in Jersey City. Um, what high school? People here with Lincoln, Lincoln High School, <laughs> class of '92. Uh, had some wonderful teachers, wonderful classmates. Um, and after high school, I got accepted to MIT uh, in Boston. Um, graduated with a degree in engineering, with master's in engineering and economics. And um, after graduation, I went to work on Wall Street. So I kind of have 16 lives out of my life, just sucked out by Wall Street, but that's kind of what so happened. So were you part of Occupy Wall Street? By no, it was on the other <laughs> side, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a good experience. It was the time when Wall Street was um, uh, uh, automating everything and making everything digital. So runners that you probably heard about before who were collecting tickets on the trading floor, when I joined, mm. they were no longer there, but we still have issues of double booking trades and a lot of operational tickets. When I left um, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, the traders actually, it's actually systems that are actually trading right now. It's electronic trading. Most of it is done electronically. So, so I got to experience um, automation, a lot of technology advances, and, and learn how to implement technology systems to streamline processes. And okay. that was a great experience, and I can take it, you know. Let's, let's go to the next introduction, and we'll come back. Sure. Hi to the audience of GoPro Radio. We're really glad to be here with you tonight, Earl. Um, my name is Emmanuel Simon, and I actually grew up in the warm, unlike outside right now, <laughs> um, Caribbean country of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I left there for college when I went to Alabama to Tuskegee University, um, kind of following in the steps of the Tuskegee Airmen, which was to learn aerospace engineering. So um, did that. Can, I can go around saying I'm a rocket scientist and be legit. Oh, right. Um, but beyond that, around graduation, I think my path kind of changed a bit and got more interested in marketing and uh, business kind of stuff. Um, so from there, um, got accepted to Harvard Business School and um, spent two years there learning about innovation and product development and essentially how businesses are run. And um, leaving there, came to work in New York with uh, one of the top 10 design firms, uh, creating products like, like websites, websites, like applications, applications on mobile phones, phones like, like digital signs and, and, and that, that kind of stuff. stuff. Um, and I did, did that for about three years until I think around 2012 uh, when, when I began being more of a stay-home dad, dad with a new baby, baby girl. girl. And um, um, learning more about the world, about development, and, development and, and kind of being an entrepreneur. So that's kind of been the path. Okay. okay. Name? Uh, my name. serial number? <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Akizia Grigsby, and I'm from Jersey City. Uh, I went to PS 40 school before it was uh, middle school. Uh, went to PS 38. 
then, then to, to St. Dominic, Dominic Academy, and, and then, then I switched to uh, Dickinson High School, School with the Visual Performing Arts Program so, so that I could get into Parsons School of Design. Design. Uh, and, and then, then senior year of Parsons Parson School of Design, Design I, I did an exchange program at Columbia University. <coughs> so uh, my, my background, background is in visual, visual arts. arts. Uh, I, I, I always consider, consider myself a cool, cool nerd, nerd because I was, I was in the entertainment, entertainment business, business, you know, I, I was a designer. Um, and, and, you know, you know I kind of set trends. trends. So, but, but there was the nerd part, part of me where, where I was, you know, in, in the Gifted and Talented program. program. Uh, That's the 38 school. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. And uh, I, I just, you know, know I, 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 love I love math. math. I, would I would do math, math as just, just instead, instead of reading, reading books. books. You know, just at home. I would read books on... You know, you know, physics, just, just for fun. fun. Who, who does, does that? that? Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. especially. <laughs> I, did. I did actually. Who? I did. I did. You, you, so that's, that's why we're here with you. Who's the guy? I didn't really. I, uh, that, 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 I never. You know, I couldn't figure out uh, compound interest, so uh, my <laughs> my math skills were never really good. <laughs> So uh, it, while I was in high school, I actually modeled professionally. And so with that, I got to meet some great people, you know, Russell Simmons. I know um, Russell. So that, that actually, that, those connections helped me. Um, I made a decision, decision to, to go, go to, to school, school, to university, university instead, instead of continuing, continuing the modeling, modeling thing, thing, just because, because I valued education. education. Um, um, and, and so, so uh, with, with that, that, actually, I, while, while I was at Parsons School, School of Design, Design, I worked at the computer lab, lab you, know, you know, taking computers, computers apart, and that's when I actually learned computers. computers. I, before, before that, you know, the school, school system didn't teach us that. that. So, so um, you, you know, know being, being at, at the computer, computer lab, I met uh, an art director at L'Oreal, and uh, I just approached her and said, you know, hey, are you guys hiring for any interns? She, you know, got, got my number, number called, called me back, back two weeks later, and, and she said, no, we don't have any internships, but we can, can hire you as a freelancer for $10 an hour. Now, now mind you, this is 1993. Yeah, that's that's not that, that was a lot of money. money. I, felt I felt that, that I was rich. rich. Yeah. So, so immediately, immediately I was like, like Mom, I'm moving out. out. <laughs> Found, <laughs> Found myself in an apartment in Queens. And it was, you know, I just kind of, I struggled, but I did it all on my own. Um, and, you know, just with that, uh, I, I'm just kind of figuring out where I wanted to go with this. Um, I, I knew that, you know, I had the background of the, the fashion through the modeling, the art, uh, visual arts. Um, someone told me, well, you're not going to make money, you know, uh, uh, illustrating your, your, your work. work. Uh, so, so I suggest, I suggest you go into communication design. design. I, didn't I didn't know what, what that, that was. Yeah, I was just... So, Burrowing my brow. With <laughs> yeah, I was like, communications, well, what is that? And so they just kind of explained it to me. I said, well, if it makes more money and I can hire myself as an illustrator, let me do it. Uh, did it, and I kind of learned the, the ropes through it. And also, I think getting actual work while I was in school, I was actually three years ahead of all my classmates when I graduated. Yeah. So I was able to hire my classmates <laughs> by the time I graduated. Like school was superfluous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I learned the foundation, um, like of typography, things like that, that helped. Uh, but it, it honestly, the, the connections, the networking that I did back then has helped me to be where I'm at right now. Um, and, and so, I, you know, after I graduated, uh, I, I had a son, uh, a boy, uh, and I made a choice to, to be a single parent versus be in an abusive relationship. Yes. So I can understand that choice. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, I mean, until this day, I kind of struggle. Like, did, did I make the right decision, you know, to be a single parent? But you know yeah, but what? There aren't a lot of single parents down here, around here where we are, mm -hmm. who can say they went to Columbia University. <laughs> and, and you know what? Also, now my life purpose, I, I get it now. In 2007, well, before 2007, I was a creative director of uh, Sean, John, and Bad Boy Entertainment. Before that, uh, I, I ran the Urban Music Creative. Sean, and, John, and Bad mm -hmm. Boy. Where do we know that name from? Uh, Puffy. You know him as something Puffy, else, yeah. P. Diddy, Chris Sean Puffy. Combs. Oh, right. yeah. I told him, I was like, look, Puff, you work you'll always him. be Puffy to me. <laughs> like, that Diddy, P. Diddy, yeah, that, no, uh, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Wasn't working for me. No, either. no, no. <laughs> but I made, in 2007, I made the decision to quit so I could raise my son. Uh, he was in fifth grade at that time, and, uh, you know, my son, dark skin, uh, I, I, being me, I'm light skin, I figured, you know what, I need, to, I need to do something different so that my son just doesn't become a statistic. Uh, where were you I, living? Uh, where was I living at that time? I was living... 
I was living on Palace. I mean, on uh, Bergen Avenue uh, near Fairview. Fair. It's about Fairmont or Fairview. A few blocks from my house. Yeah. 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 So, um, and you know, so I I made that decision, and uh, when I when I did that, I tr I transferred him from private school to public school. What public school? Uh, uh, PS Eleven. So at first, Martin I was looking. King School. Yes, I actually bought uh, an investment home in two thousand. Um, I was I was making a lot of money in my career, so I was able to do stuff like that. Uh, and so, but when I switched him to the school, he started to fail, and that opened my eyes because I didn't know what was going on. I had a, I had a nanny, a living nanny, raising my son for me. Yeah. I was I was traveling fifty percent of my time uh, through you know in the entertainment business, so uh, that is when my advocacy kicked in naturally in in the community and i became involved in the community and honestly i could tell you that's when i was i i, I became exposed to what jersey city was because before then i was always in new york well you know, you know <laughs> uh i'm i'm i don't know what i'm doing sitting here i don't go to columbia i don't go to harvard i don't, I don't go to mit I, let me explain something to you she just rattled off i went to mit in boston and that sounds like yeah okay but <laughs> mit now we have an issue here in this in, in this in Hudson County because MIT is often considered the foremost engineering school in the United States. However, here we have a codicil to that. People say that Stevens is as good as MIT. Mm -hmm. And Stevens is in Hoboken and it is a very good school. school. Mm -hmm. You can't you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't, can't go wrong, wrong with either one, one of them. But, but MIT, MIT has a, a, a certain, certain cachet. cachet. Probably, Probably because, because it's in Boston, Boston along with Harvard. Harvard. Mm. Now, <laughs> now, you know, what, what am I doing, doing sitting here with you guys? guys? I, I didn't go anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> you know, no, essentially. Uh, but, but I'm, I'm so, so glad you're here. here. This is you're also a testament, testament to what, 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 what education, education is really all about. about. You, you made, made a decision to be a, a single, single mom. Mm -hmm. rather, rather than put, put yourself in a situation where you could be abused. What, what made, made all, all of that possible for you was, was you had options. Mm -hmm. all, all those options were generated by, by your education. Now, now I, I want to explain something to you people. It's very important because, because our school system, system takes a terrible beating. beating. It's not unwarranted in many cases. But we're looking at at least two young ladies right here who know all about our public school system. You mm -hmm. said you graduated yes. from St. Dominic? No, uh, Dickinson High Dickinson. School. My daughter went to St. Dominic. And what's interesting about Dickinson, we have another high school here called the Academic High School, which is supposed to be one of the best in the country. I'm not going to say it isn't. I just have issues with why it exists. But they have this thing they call the Academic Bowl every year. Now, you think that Academic High School would walk away with that, right? You know what the competition is? Dickinson High School. Mm. And often Dickinson wins. Wow. But it also has some of the most trouble. I call it the agony and the ecstasy. Mm. Because it has <laughs> some of the smartest kids in the country in Dickinson High School. And some of the most troubled kids in the country in yeah. Dickinson High School. And there's a clash of, I don't know if you call it civilizations or mm -hmm. lifestyles or something. But uh, what I wanted to show is that with all of that, we people can and do excel that come, come out, out of the schools, schools here. here. And, 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 and as you, you went, went to Tuskegee, Tuskegee we, we have, have a lot of Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen who, who either lived here or live here. Okay. They're, They're dying, dying off rapidly, rapidly now, but we, we had a lot of them here. I know, I know a, a police, police officer, officer, a judge, judge, judge uh, Scott. Scott. Um, I just, I just know, know a lot, lot of people. The guy that was a, a number, number writer, writer and a, and a, 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 a tavern, tavern owner, yeah. he, was he was a Tuskegee Airman. You know, you know it, it, I, I feel blessed, blessed to just be in your presence. presence but, but, you know, you know let's, let's talk, talk a little, little bit about what you're, what you're doing, doing now. now. Um, I, bought I bought some stuff with me here about, about this, this operation, operation you're getting. And, and first, first of all, it, you read, read it, it and it just ah, gets, gets you all excited. excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, first of all, you're doing something that is very, very, very interesting. And I'm going to just... Start us with Code, Code for America. America. Tell, Tell me about what Code, Code for America is about. Code, Code for America Brigade, you call it. What, what is, is that, that about? about? Okay. So, <coughs> uh, Code, Code for America, America is a non-profit organization, organization 
um, started by Jennifer, Jennifer Kaka. Kaka. And, and her, her vision was to um, kind of create, create like a peace corps for, um, for um, the technologists. So, so um, she, they, they selected the vote uh, 2025 um, and talented people, people who become fellows. fellows. And um, um, there's, there's also, also 2025 20, cities that being selected each year. year. And the, the fellows get dropped into the city, into, into the governments. governments. Right? And, and they, they spend one year trying to teach um, the governments how to be more technology savvy. Uh, what, what solutions, solutions they can implement to provide more services, services for the residents. residents. And um, usually, usually after, after that one year, year there was a little, little bit of a gap. gap. What, what, what do we do next? So the concept of brigade started. And the brigade is really a, a group of local residents who are often technology savvy, but also um, interested in civic projects and improving the community. They get together on a regular basis, weekly or bi-weekly, and establish working relationship with the government and try to improve things kind of from, from the outside. But they're local and they're passionate about the, what they're doing. So that's what the brigade, the brigade is. is. And, and we, we started, started a, a brigade, brigade of, of Code for America, America um, uh, last, last year, year in, in December. December. So, so we just celebrated our first anniversary. anniversary. Um, um, and um, I probably, probably not talk a little well. well so, so, so that, that was the brigade, brigade. And, 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 and it's all volunteer, volunteer based. based. And, and, and we, we also realized this whole year that, that it's, it's really, really good concept, concept that it's local, it's people, it's people who are passionate, passionate about, about neighborhoods. But, but um, it's, it's very hard, hard to complete projects, projects when, when you're doing this a couple hours, hours a week. week right? right? It really, really, there's, there's so, so much need for technology and for solutions for us in communities. So we are actually taking the station up and we're trying to find funding for uh, our, our projects. projects. So, so we, we kind, kind of rebranding rebrand the organization uh, to, to become a nonprofit on its own, own with, 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 with its own funding and, and against past projects and hire people to help us run it. Right. All right, we're, we're going to take a, a, we're we're gonna gonna take a, a commercial, commercial break, break here. here. And, and we're, we're going to come back and with a load of other information. These people here, they just buoy you with their knowledge and their passion for what they do. Just stick there, don't go nowhere. We, we shall, shall return, return very, very shortly. shortly. You're listening to content development. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a great opportunity. If you have an event, product, service, talent, or something important to say, now is your chance. You can have your very own radio show. Whether you're just starting out or a veteran looking for a professional platform to enhance your presentation and following, the GoPro Radio Network is the premier place to cultivate and share new and exciting content. We can help you grow your audience and keep it growing long after your first broadcast. Now you have a voice. Call 212 696 8562 or visit www.goproradio.com and you'll be amazed at how easy and affordable it is to have your very own professional radio show on the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. Amazing people, rooted in Africa, the cradle of human civilization, descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way. People steeped in the values of truth, justice, respect, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt, too much loss. We are our ancestors, ourselves and our children, so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. All right, we're back at uh, the Earl Morgan Hour with my three guests who are some astounding <laughs> young people. <laughs> I mean, 
They just make me feel really, really good. I want your names, please. I'm Emmanuel Simon. Emmanuel Simon. Anna Lukasiak. Akisia Grigsby. And your organization is called? OpenJC. OpenJC. Um, we, we were talking, talking for, for a, a few minutes, minutes ago about, about uh, a, a few, few things about coding. One of the things that interests me is that you, you guys want to teach young people how to code. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand for me, I don't know what all that's about. I, I know that sitting there writing some kind of doing something with a bunch of numbers so you get what you want. I do know that if you turn out a good app, you're going to give me a real you're rich person. But how do you go about, about teaching kids, kids how to code? Well, let, let, me, let, me let me step, step back, back just, just a little, little bit and, and talk, talk a bit about our mission, mission in general. general. Um, we've been having a lot of discussions recently, strategically planning for 2015, and, and I'll try and say it properly this time. Um, but we're really about creating and implementing what we call sustainable civic solutions. And I use the word civic to simply mean for the local community. Um, these kinds of initiatives um, and also technology education for youth and adults in the local community. And we say both youth, youth and adults uh, on purpose. We believe absolutely the children are our future. It's very important and we see the school program shifting that way. We see jobs moving to that way where you need to have either programming or understanding the logic behind computer and logic thinking and problem solving. Um, so that's absolutely one part of it. But there's another part which we are actually very passionate and we're seeing a lot more support and reasons to do this, which is to not say, well, those who aren't in the youth you know, we're just forgetting about you. Um, we, we very much believe in, you know, making sure that we educate parents, making sure that we educate anyone. There are a lot of folks who would claim, and I, and I use claim strongly, that they're not tech savvy, but yet they know how to do everything on their phone. <laughs> they know how to use Netflix. They know how to send their email. <laughs> when their email goes down, it's like, what is happening to my life? <laughs> and Here I am. <laughs> that interest and that level of engagement already proves that you have more than what is needed to engage in this, what we call digital lifestyle type of thing. So when, when, we, when we say we're interested in teaching, it's, it's more than just the kids, it's more than just the youth, but saying everyone needs to know how to do this. Everyone needs to be in a place where you're not just a consumer of the app on your phone or the website. You're not just going to Facebook and expecting someone else to make the next great app or a great game, but actually you're saying, you know what, I have an idea and me and my friends, or, so or some, some other folks in the neighborhood, neighborhood or, or other, other folks, folks in school, school and the community here, how about we get, we get together and we make this and, and see what happens? happens. I mean, whether, whether or not it becomes, becomes the thing that, that makes you rich, rich sure, sure, that'll, that'll be, be great. great. But, but I think there's a lot more than just the experience. It's going be fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely fun. fun. You know, um, I, I, I hear everything you're saying. As a matter of fact, I went back and took a course. The Jersey City Public Library. Thank, Thank God, God for libraries. libraries. I don't know. Just libraries. I have a saying that all librarians are going to go to heaven, and they're going to get in. My mom was a librarian. Because they're not going to make any money. Mm. <laughs> they're not going to make any money, and they're going to do great things for people. And when they get to the pearly gates, St. Peter's will St. Peter will say, well, what did you do? I was a librarian. He said, well, come on in. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that's... Um, the librarians are pre-computer information architects. Yes, yeah. and I'll tell it's, you, I found out in many ways that they do a lot more than stamp books. Correct. Uh, but they have a course in the Jersey City Public Library to teach computers. computer literacy. Yeah. And uh, I tried to take the course. My problem was, and I got the show, the show comes on the same time uh, that the, the class starts, so I couldn't, I couldn't go. But there was so much to learn, and everybody in, in there was like me. They were old guys, <laughs> old fuddy duddies, and they got there, you know, they're trying to figure it out. But they knew they needed to know. Yeah. Uh, my Usually when I need to know something like it, I have three grandsons, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> two of them in the academic high school. And uh, when my computer isn't working, they come and fix it. Right. Uh, and it's kind of funny because we talked about typing. Mm -hmm. Now, I was a student and I didn't take typing. But then I started to get into the music industry and got some writing assignments and I didn't know how to type. You got to be able to type. Mm -hmm. So I got an old, now this is the days, this, you know, my grandson once saw my royal portable manual typewriter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, Pop Pop, what is that? That's a piece <laughs> of art now. <laughs> no, I could probably get some money for it uh, somewhere. <laughs> Um, 
And I sat down and, and, and learned how to type. My grandsons never took, they just did it. And I can't, <laughs> I scratch, I, who taught you how to type? They look at me like, they teach this? <laughs> how does that work? How, is it, I keep thinking there's a gene you guys had that we just didn't get. And, you know, it turns on and you young folks. No. It's just about exposure, honestly. Um, I'm not a coder, but I was exposed to it at Parsons School of Design uh, through the ha the hardware of it, and then obviously the sh the software part of it. Um, it it intrigued me, and you know I kind of merged what what I was interested in communications and illustration with uh, websites. And back then, when I was in school, HTML1 was created, so I actually created okay. a website on HTML1. My thesis, which I chose, the the nerdy side of me. Uh, how to you know to create a video game, and I did that. I coded it and I designed it, and that that was you know I put it together. The animation, I put all of that together. Hopefully, we'll get past this nerd thing. <laughs> I'll tell you why. When I was a kid in high school, nobody was ever called that. Right. They were called a brain. Mm. It wasn't anything at all pejorative about being smart. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I sat next to people in in Lincoln High School. One of the guys that sat next to me was a lawyer that closed on my house. He went to Rutgers for chemistry, didn't like it, so he went back and got a law degree. <laughs> okay. you know? But we never thought of him as a nerd. I know he wasn't a nerd because he partied just as hard as I did. <laughs> I was there with him. But uh, then we got this nerd thing which seemed to separate people who have an inclination to education, books, and technology yeah. mm -hmm. from all the rest of us idiots that don't think that's that important. Uh, and then I noticed that the Geek Squad turned all that around. There were guys <laughs> riding around in Volkswagens calling themselves the Geek Squad. And I went to get it a computer fixed, I uh, know a tablet fixed. And I had to go to the Geek Squad. That's and right. there was this young black girl back there who fixed my computer. Yep. And I said, you, you really want to be called the Geek Squad? And she said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt good about it, you know, because that meant that brains now are in, yeah. you know, yeah, it's yeah. hip to be smart. Yes. Uh, absolutely. And you see it, you see it in media, you see a lot of it. So I know for the last two or three years, the number one show on television has been The Big Bang Theory. And yes. the, the characters, everything is around this kind of nerd, geek, um, excelling in science and engineering, mm -hmm. essentially the STEM curriculum. Um, across the show, and they found a way to make that the new version of Friends or what Sanford yeah. was in generations past. And they made it something engaging. They didn't make these people kind of some kind of right. foreign, uh, like the nerd series of movies they made, <laughs> right. which was another, another story. Uh, also, I wanted to talk to you about, since you especially went to 40 school, mm -hmm. and you went to Lincoln High School, and you went to Tuskegee, I mean, you guys just... I think I'm going to kidnap all of you. <laughs> Take you home. Uh, my wife probably wouldn't be happy. Um, I understand that you somehow have hooked up with Dr. Elnardo Webster, who's an old friend of mine, and there's some things you're going to be doing together with the kids from 40 School. Yeah. With, and, and, and Francine Luce, who's the principal, a fierce lady. Mm -hmm. Fierce lady. I mean, she. I think we should clone her and you know, <laughs> make all the principals like her. And yeah. Can anybody give me an idea of what you'll be doing? Um, Anna, you want to start? Because um, Emmanuel and I, I think we're out of town. Uh, and so well, Anna, Anna uh, started, started the conversation, conversation with Dr. Webster. Webster and, and then today we had, had an amazing brainstorming, brainstorming session. session. We're, we're actually, actually taking, taking the program, program three, three notches, notches up. up. And yeah. we'll explain that, that uh, yeah, yeah, in a second. second. So, so um, the, the first, first thing we want to do is uh, introduce after-school um, programs. So um, part of it is going to be teaching kids sort of business principles, uh, marketing, um, and coding or, or technology in general. Um, and the first um, kind of class is going to be probably a couple of weeks or, or you know three weeks curriculum. And just to get the kids interested and, and see which kids are interested in maybe more the business side, maybe more the marketing side. And then we're going to branch out and make those classes a little more specific for them. So it's kind of a pilot that we're launching yeah. in the spring. And then we'll, we'll take it and see, we'll see if we can actually clone it in September for other schools as well. So our target is really middle schools right now. 
um, the, the sixth, seventh grade is the mm -hmm. most important grade. I think that the kids have to be introduced to those concepts. Right. So one thing that we talked about was, okay, so we have a lot of kids who want to be athletes, right? Who want to be yeah. singers, rappers. Well, why don't we take that and, and, and give them a, a workshop or a curriculum so that they can learn how to be that? And we ha we have already done this. Uh, we already have the curriculum. How do you in teach place. somebody to be a rapper? Well, we w what we do is, well, if let's say for example we have a group, we'll break them up into smaller groups, right? Let's say there's a small group who there's one person who loves to sing and she's an amazing singer. Well, we can create uh, a business so the people around will have the the, the manager, will have uh, the marketing expert, will have the business uh, manager, and we'll teach them the real life skills how to develop that one artist. And they all are, are the brains of this operation. I so. see. I see. And, and part of that really ties into the exposure point that we talked about earlier. So you asked the question, you know, is this a gene that turned on? Why is it that these kids just know how these things work? And it made me think of an example, like maybe when I was growing up, you know, I spent a lot of my time playing with my bicycle. I knew, I knew every, every bolt, bolt, I knew to change the gears, gears every, every time, time it broke, broke I'd keep that, that tire pumped up. up. Um, um, maybe, maybe before, before me, my dad, it was like his car. He was always working in the car and managing. And you spend time, time and just being familiar, familiar with it and essentially you become, become an expert in, in that thing. thing. And, and I, I think, think, you know, know in, in, in this day and age, the technology, the, the phones, the tablets, the laptops are those new bicycles. And, 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 and that's, that's kind of part, part of, of the, the reason why it's so familiar. familiar. Uh, we, we have to take a break, break I'm afraid. afraid. I mean, I'm, I'm glad, glad that happened because we had some sponsors and believe me, we don't have one not here. But uh, we'll just have to interrupt the show for a moment and then we'll be right back. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio delay. Network, the fastest growing yes, network in the galaxy. Uh, no, GoPro no, Radio no, Network. No, Listen to the voices in your head. Sounds good. There's, there's a book that I read, uh, and I, I, right now I can't think of the name because I've been working so many hours. So you know, yeah. um, that it, it, it explains about Bill Gates. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a so great opportunity. In, and if the you have an event, hours product, put in, service, talent, or something important to, to say now is your chance. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, have your very own radio so show. Well, Whether you're just yeah. starting out or a veteran uh, looking I'm for a professional platform to take seven hours only. The GoPro Radio so Network is the premier place to cultivate your yes. new and exciting content. We can help you grow your audience and keep it growing long after your first broadcast. Now, you have a voice. Call 212-696-8562 or visit www.goproradio.com and you'll be amazed at how easy and affordable it is to have your very own professional radio show on the Michael fastest Jordan's growing stuff. network in the they galaxy. The GoPro Radio Network. Right? Listen to this one the voices in your head. A good journalist is what's called the jack of all trades. We are an amazing people. Rooted in Africa, the cradle of human civilization. Descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way. People steeped in the values of truth, justice, respect, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt. Too much loss. We are our ancestors, ourselves, and our children, so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. All right, All right, we're, we're back, back at the Air Hall now with my three guests. Oh, I, I want to introduce them themselves again. I want, I want you to hear these people, people because they're, they're young and they're smart. First, uh, Anna Lukasiak, Emmanuel Simon, and Akisiak Grigsby. Now, here's the interesting thing about two of my guests. They're all fascinating people. First of all, they're smart people. And see, coming from where I come from, smart is everything. Um, Two of, the, two of my guests, the two young ladies that are here, 
more or less hail from, from, from this area. area. So, so don't, don't let anybody, anybody tell you that you can't be smart if you come from Jersey City. Mm -hmm. They all prove positive that that's not true. Um, um, we, we were talking, talking before the break about the all the things, things you can do with coding and, and, and the ways that you can teach all these uh, these professions. Where were you guys when I was trying to get started? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a whole different story back then. <laughs> but, but the skills that you need still exist. Mm -hmm. Uh, when, when, and you, you, you said, said you're ready to start, start you're, you're thinking, thinking about how to get this going in the Jersey City schools, schools, at least one or two of them, in, in the, the spring uh, of next year, or in the fall of next year. You said that you had talked about going another couple of steps. Mm -hmm. I know that that, that might, might be a lot of speculation, but I'd like to know what you guys are speculating about. What, what, are, are, these, what are these other things, things you want to do? Well, um, regarding the, the actual program, uh, one of the things I did mention was, uh, you know, it, taking it beyond just coding, uh, creating real life situations where kids, our, our current kids who are detached from wanting to learn. Um, making them fascinated by it. So right now, I know we have a ton of kids in the public school system who want to be athletes, who uh, want to be singers, rappers. Well, why don't we, why don't we nurture that? Um, and, and why don't we show them what the process is? And during that process, uh, they may decide, you know what, I want to be the business manager. I want to handle the money. I want to hustle. Um, versus not be that star. And, and being that the, the person in front of the camera will teach them the pressures that will come with that. That, that maybe, maybe they may not want to be exposed to that. that. So uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting. interesting. And then and with, with that, we'll, we'll also always teach them the technology piece, yes. which is, you know, you create your own website. website. Um, if, if, it's a pro if they, they want to create a product-based business, how to create an e-commerce website, website with an app. Uh, uh, all of those elements, we are going to incorporate. Yes, yes. yes. Um, the, uh, the importance of this they, this, this program, program that, 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 that you're talking, talking about, about 21st Century Avenue School mm -hmm. Program, to show you how, it, how, how, how you guys, guys are right, right. Somebody's, somebody's watching out for us because, because you guys, guys are right on time. time. Last, Last summer, they had a shark tank for the students. And the, the interesting, interesting thing about Dr. Dr. Webster's program is he operates out of St. Peter's University, which we all know is St. Peter's College. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, now he's on the staff, he's on the board, and he's pretty much doing what he needs to do. And I, he invited me to the show. I sat there watching this thing, grinning the whole time. The kids had to come up with a commercial. They shoot it, write it, you know, script it, act in it, and everything. And, and they had to come, come up with a product, product just, just like the real shark tank on television. television. And then, then they had to get, get up and give an audio, an oral presentation, and sell, sell it. Right. And, and my co-host, who usually sits there where you are, uh, Tina Bland, who was an amazing young lady herself, so, um, she was one of the judges. But I, my thought about that whole thing was, they're saying how you do all of those things. Exactly. How you make a commercial how you handle a camera, mm -hmm. how you write a script, yeah. how you direct it. The, because my, the problem I'm having with the young people today, somehow this happened. I don't know. I'm not quite worked out in my mind what happened. But the youngsters today live in 10 block radius mm -hmm. worlds. They don't venture beyond that. Right. Right. And... Uh, a friend of mine once said, if you had a bunch of plea fleas, you put them on a table, put a glass over them. Mm -hmm. You come back in the next the next morning, that's mm -hmm. their world. Right. They will right. never leave the circumference. That has happened to our children. Yeah. So what Webster's program did and what, what I loved about what he did, they put these kids on, the, on a bus during the summer, took them down to St. Peter's University for the day. This is their version of summer school. Right. Now, when I went to summer school, it was a punitive thing. <laughs> you went because you failed something, and in six weeks, you were supposed to, you know, get past French 1 or French 2 or whatever it was. You're but, no, you have to apply to get into this. Mm -hmm. You have to want to go. And when I went down to 40 school, it, it was in April, 
they already had like 90 people mm-hmm. who had already said they wanted to go. And they take those kids down there and they spend the day in the classrooms there with the recreation facilities there, talking to the kids there, doing whatever. They would never know they're only a half a mile away from a college, but they might as well be a half a, a world away from a college. Right. Mm-hmm. They're getting to see. Some of them say, I want to go here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, somehow you guys knew that. We knew that in my generation. We knew college was there and we were going to go. It was in my generation, it was in the air. You had to go. <laughs> but they're, they're, Webster's program and what you're talking about is reintroducing kids to a whole new world in a way better than I got it. Because when I started in the music industry, you know, I was on a singing group and we had to go <laughs> get us a manager somewhere. And we went over to 1650. And we did make a record called No Money, which was after the title because we made no money. Uh, and uh, we didn't know. We know nothing. We knew that we had, there was something called royalties, which we never got any of. Oh, we knew something about publishing, but we knew there were publishing companies, but we didn't know what they really did. All we wanted to do was make a record. We didn't understand any of that other stuff. Can, but wait, you can got, I, you're can giving I, them sophistication we didn't have. Can I hear a verse? Can you sing a verse? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'll tell you what's funny, I can't though. can't challenge you. No. No. Your entire I, audience would love to hear that. I, yes. I got to tell you. No, they not now. <laughs> not with the nerds on my vocal cords. Uh, I was the background singer. I was a baritone. I wasn't the lead singer. All the disclaimers. Um, <laughs> and years after we made that record, I'm walking down the street. I had a singing group that I was managing. I taught them the song. They thought it was great. I never liked the song. <laughs> And one day I'm walking down the street, Bergen Avenue, Mm -hmm. and these kids are coming towards me singing the song. (laughs) Stop. I I couldn't (laughs) move. I said, this can't be happening. (laughs) You know, they liked it. Now, this was like, what, eight years after we made it? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. But that shows you nothing dies. As a matter Mm -hmm. of fact, I found the song on... uh, on YouTube. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What, what's the name? The full name? No Money by the DeVilles. By the DeVilles. D-E-V-I-L-E-S. Yeah, D-E-V-I-L-E-S. It was named after the Cadillac DeVille. Or whatever the French talk about. Well, maybe we can help out finding the data for that song to see how much hits it got. Maybe you can get some royalties. I don't think so. The company is this. The company died out. The last time I saw anybody involved in it was one of the guys who was, who was producing, producing us, us. He, he was the road, road manager, manager for Isaac Hayes. Hayes. And he uh, says, I never, I never made, made any money, money out of this song. So, so. Okay. Um, um, but, but you can see, I came, I came out, of out of that. that. And, and I'm, I'm looking, looking at what you're doing, doing this thing. Where were you? you? I've been waiting, waiting for you all my life. life. <laughs> um, this, this is interesting, interesting because, because what, what I've seen is that the kids get a chance to experience things Roads that they can take. Mm-hmm. Webster's Webster whole thing, thing is everybody, everybody doesn't need to go to college. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. Everybody, everybody doesn't need it. But, but see, see what they've they done. We've had a shop, shop and um, uh, home, home banking, banking schools. schools. Mm-hmm. The geniuses, geniuses that run, run the school, school system did away with shops yeah, I couldn't and home ec. I learned actually about electricity in fifth grade when I created a lamp. Well, yes, but what happened, I know, I, I, I did, look, I, I made an ashtray. <laughs> um, and out of wood, no less. Can you imagine who yeah. needs a wooden ashtray? <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you did, if you have a bent to become a carpenter mm. and you never put your hands on the tools of the trade, you'll mm. never know that you have that acclimation. Right. That's right. And right now there's something going on that you got again, you guys are I can I can I bet Webster who's become very religious, very de- devout I should say, he's gotta be praying every time he thinks about you guys. <laughs> because of the park test. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now I looked at one minute, I I looked at the park test and I said, yeah. this is gonna start trouble. Yeah. Uh, and he is urging everyone to do something to help these kids get to computers so they can learn how to navigate that world mm-hmm. uh, of the digital world. Mm-hmm. Um, he's having some success, but you guys are just what the doctor ordered. So can I bring something to that point? Uh, maybe Just after we come off this commercial break, 
that we shall be going on very shortly. Right now, I believe. Uh, we Please don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. We're just getting into some juicy stuff now. We'll be right back. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a great opportunity. If you have an event, product, service, talent, or something important to say, now is your chance. You can have your very own radio show. Whether you're just starting out or a veteran looking for a professional platform to enhance your presentation and following, the GoPro Radio Network is the premier place to cultivate and share new and exciting content. We can help you grow your audience and keep it growing long after your first broadcast. Now you have a voice. Call 212-696-8562 or visit www.goproradio.com and you'll be amazed at how easy and affordable it is to have your very own professional radio show on the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. What if you can have an entire team of skilled professionals to help your business grow? Admin, accounts, marketing, and more but only pay for the exact amount of support you need at virtually the same cost you'd pay for one full-time employee. With Virtual Professions, you can. One contact, one number gets you a team of virtual professionals for exactly what your business needs. It's 1-888-315-VPRO. That's 1-888-315-8776. Or online at www virtualprofessions.net Virtual Professions Incorporated because you mean business What if you can have an entire team of skilled professionals We are an amazing people rooted in Africa the cradle of human civilization descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way people steeped in the values of truth justice respect harmony balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt. Too much loss. We are our ancestors, ourselves, and our children so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. All right, folks, we're back with the Earl Morgan Hour. I'm your host, Earl Morgan. I'm flying solo tonight. My co-host, Chenia Bland, is home with the flu. Uh -uh. And, uh... It took that to slow her down because she, you know, you've heard the unsinkable Molly Brown. That, that's Tina. She, she's a force of nature, really. Uh, but I, I, I'm sure she's going to be angry that she wasn't here tonight because, sorry, boy, you people, she drink you guys up. Um, <laughs> that simply means we got to come back. You, right. Listen, you will be. I, I'm going to see if we can arrange at least once a month. Um, oh, that's seriously, great, yeah. seriously, seriously, seriously. Um, now you're working in, in you're, you're working with Webster to, to, to get things going in the mm -hmm. schools. Yep. Have you done any work at all with the, with the youth in the, in the Jersey City schools? Yes. Um, but what I wanted to actually talk about, you mentioned something before commercial break about the park assessment the test. The park assessment right, test. Right, that That's coming what up. I meant about working with the kids. So, so with that, um, one thing we need to talk about in this conversation is the parents, right? Mm -hmm. Parent involvement. Uh, parent involvement uh, obviously, there's so many social issues that are going on with that, that, you know, no one seems to know how to handle this. I remember having an interview over at Scholastic, and the, the VP of the company said there's an issue that they don't even know how to deal with parent involvement. And what they do is they rely on the superintendents 
who don't even know how to handle uh, a pair. Yeah. So there's this big problem. But what we did was, uh, you know, by being so involved in the community and actually being from here and knowing uh, kind of what to do, we uh, are partnering with, with Dr. Webster and we're creating a model uh, how to overcome this particular situation. So, and I know, this is, are you ready to hear this? Yeah. yeah. Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, PS number three school, uh, which is, you know, it's considered the privileged, yes, you know, the, yes. the parents. Uh, but one thing they do have is that they have the best parent uh, parent council, the PTA, uh, for a good reason uh, that a lot of the parents are involved. But what what the principal um, and the president of the uh, the parent council PTA did was establish a uh, parent uh, representative for each classroom. Now, that parent a representative of each classroom gets to keep uh, uh, Anna. You can better describe because her actually her her children go to PS three, mm-hmm. um, and then I'll kind of kick it back. Uh, uh, we call that the school. Those schools, the schools on the other side of the Mason Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey City has two school systems right. mm-hmm. yep. split by Montgomery Street. Well, P- PS three does have about fifty percent or more kids on free lunches, so it's. You know, it's a mixed school. I, we, we consider it as a mixed school, not not 100% privileged. Um, but what, what the PTA has done um, uh, in PS3, we have a, um, what we call the parent um, class coordinator. So it's one person per school who works closely with the principal and with the PTA. And um, that parent would communicate with class parents. So each classroom has a parent representative. And then the message would go down, or the communication would go down uh, between the class parent and all the parents within the classroom. So that parent, you know, there are 25 or 40 kids, that parent will know 20 parents or 40 parents. Um, so one of the things we're trying to do right now is to make sure that all the parents in the school have, have email. And if they don't have email, we're going to help them set up. And the principal actually offered to set up classes within PS3 to teach some parents how to set up email, how to read email, and we can do all the classes. So part of the problem, I think, is to identify those families that don't have internet, don't have um, computers at home. And um, if we have that list, if we know how many people actually need it, we can take it then and create a campaign. Um, I have sponsors come in, um, company Comcast. Um, Comcast has offered right. the exactly. Jersey City School Board a couple of times. To, and and the, the funny to, thing is that to, the, yeah. the, the director of the, the program that that's, uh, they're giving away mm-hmm. uh, computers that person told me they are trying to reach out to the community in Jersey City. They, they just don't know who to go to. That's exactly. a very so, difficult problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we're trying to do is more of a grassroots method, um, mm-hmm. not rely so much on the um, district. Um, hopefully, the district is going to step in and help us out. Okay. But it's, it's really about um, kind of the school itself knowing, okay, who needs help? Not everybody's going to raise their hand because they may be ashamed, yeah. but we've known they don't have an email, and it's in a small environment. It's within the classroom, and, you know, people are going to be more kind of less afraid saying, yes, I, I need some help here. So now taking that, in Jersey City, now we have the parents that are completely not involved, whether it be that they're just working three jobs, or, um, or, they're, or they, they have social mental issues, mental yeah. issues um, you know, social issues, maybe that some of the parents are on drugs. We've actually created a model to help that out. We're calling it a surrogate parent campaign. You know, and we partner, like and we bring we we bring the old school way of the village raises the children. That's thank you. So, and that's important. <laughs> I mean, if that was sponsors, successful, <laughs> that's their, that's their uh, calling card. It takes a village. Oh uh, yeah, and I'm a firm believer. My mother's Dominican. She used to ship me over there every summer to my grandmother <laughs> to learn really how to the culture, the culture, and to survive. Yeah, you know, so you know where you came from. Yeah. You want to know where you're going. Yeah. So with that, we would be able to help everyone have computers and, and, and you know. You know, this <laughs> is, um, this if you guys can get into this problem and solve it, because this is really where the rubber hits the road. We had a school student in 40 school who was a real problem child. Mm-hmm. Oh, she, the way Miss Luce described it, she said, look, you, you have no idea. When we met her, butter would melt her mouth. It was the program that turned her around. Mm. She's very bright. Her English is impeccable. I don't know where she learned to speak like that. But her English, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't split infinitives or anything, you know. Um, she's a class president. She sings like a bird. We would have lost her had not mm. this program come along. Mm. And that's what I want to see. Yeah. There, there are so many bright young kids out there 
who would get turned off in the third grade. Mm -hmm. Listen, we've come to the end of the show, and we haven't started. <laughs> so you guys have got to come back. All right? We're we'll lucky. Most that, definitely. That's, that'd be great. All right. This is Earl Morgan saying good night. Thank you for tuning in to GoPro Radio. Listen for next week. We're going to do this again. Thank you. Wait a minute. Something's going wrong. Someone's on the phone. Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Talking about how she can make it right. Yeah. Happiness is when you really feel good about somebody. There's nothing wrong being in love with someone, yeah. Oh, baby, love that I have to Love that I have to Oh, baby, love and